No Road Home is about a, a young father who's sort of been living on the, the knife edge of poverty for a while. And he's raising his son, uh, our main character is uh, Toby, and his son is named Luca. Uh, they've been living in Los Angeles for all of Luca's life. And Toby has just really done his absolute best for Luca. Um, and Luca's probably queer, gay, we don't really know. He's a very sensitive child. Um, Toby's totally chill with this. Um, and before the book opens, Toby has recently married a woman named Alyssa who is the granddaughter of a TV preacher's sort of massive fortune. She's an heiress to this huge estate. And obviously Toby had some misgivings about this. Like he's not an idiot. And um, his wife is like, no, 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 don't worry. Like my family sort of pretends to be crazy on TV, but they're too rich to be bigoted is how she describes it. She's like, they don't actually believe any of this stuff. So Luca, you know, your, your, your queer kid's gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. Um, so they get married, they go out to the estate um, it's this sort of big Texas compound out in the middle of nowhere. And Toby meets the family, very quickly realizes that they are, they're not good people <laughs> and they're probably not good for his son. But before he can leave, there's this huge storm that you know, floods the roads, cuts out the internet, cuts out the phone lines. They're trapped out there and they discover that the grandfather, that the TV preacher has been murdered on the roof of the house. Somebody's killed him up on the roof of the house. And suspicion immediately points to Toby because he's, you know, coincidental that he would show up and this guy would die the same day. And Toby realizes that if he is going to get himself and his kid out of here, he's going to have to figure out who actually killed this old man. And then sort of creeping around the edges of this is this sense that there's something wrong with this house, that there might be a ghost or something stalking the halls. It's very much a gothic novel. Um, but in the same way that this is sort of about football, or the first book was about football, this one's very much about the church and the way that these, again, sports aren't inherently evil. And I don't think a church is inherently evil. I think, and that's something I did go to pains with, is try to show like a few of them are okay. A few of this family, they're not evil people. They, they are truly trying to like, you know, be like Christ as much as they can. But <laughs> they're in the wrong family and they're in the wrong house and there's too much money on the table. And I was fascinated by the weaponization of religion and the way it can be leveraged to turn it into money and the way people can be controlled with it. Uh, all of that interested me. And then at its core, it's about a father and a son. And that was a dynamic I hadn't really seen explored that much in suspense fiction. And I, I was really excited to, to dive into their relationship. The son part was easy. I mean, the son, he was the closest to me. Like I was a pretty sensitive little kid, right? Like it, the part that scared me was honestly writing as Toby, the main character, right? Like it's, it's funny because my first book, The Brylands, it's, it's a pretty transgressive novel. It's got some stuff in it that I don't know if I would write now. It's definitely the kind of book you write when you're an angry 20 something. Um, this book I think is a bit more measured, uh, but it, it felt so much more transgressive or strange to be writing from like a straight white man's perspective in a way, because it was like something I had to actually work on and to, to put myself in those shoes. And it was a, it was a really fun challenge to, to see what Toby was like, you know, this man who's just really out there doing his best for his kid. Um, so writing Luca, the son was fun. Like he actually had some, he has some chapters from his point of view near the end of the book that were really a joy to write. It was um, Toby's perspective and getting into his head and he's got some secrets of his own that he's sort of processing and some grief of his own that he's dealing with. So learning how to juggle all those, that was fun. That was a really, that was a real pleasure. I, I was really interested in the Gothic, the way that good Gothic fiction creeps up on you, like the, the sense that there's, this house would be bad enough if it was just the family, right? But I was like, okay, what happens if we add in a ghost and then or some sort of presence. And then this question of like, well, who is that presence? And then the other sort of horror that had seeped into the book, kind of like I mentioned at the beginning, I was fascinated as a kid to read the Old Testament, especially, right? You're in church, you're bored out of your mind, you actually start reading the Old Testament. And you're like, oh my God, this is terrifying. Like this is a really violent, really frightening God. Who, like, am I, is this guy still around? Like, do I still have to answer to this person? Like what's going on here? And I was really interested in this question of like, okay, what if you had this sort of like Agatha Christie setup, this very classic like manor house style mystery with a locked room, because, you know, the roof to the, 
the door to the roof is always locked. So how did somebody get a key? It's like a very kind of Agatha Christie plot. And then you just sort of watch it slowly crumble under this like Old Testament sort of horror of like there's some sort of judging force loose in this house. What is going on here?